Alright guys, in this episode of Armies of Arda, I'm going to be showcasing my Harad army. After that, I'll be adding in a couple of spearmen that I just got from a friend. Um, at the end, I'll probably go over what kind of future plans I have for this army, and maybe some allies that I can add in. But first, the intro. So Harad is based to the south of Middle-earth in a hot, dry climate, and I wanted my army to reflect this. The only thing that's south of Harad is the Hitherlands and the Darklands, but unfortunately we don't really know much about these areas as Tolkien didn't write about them much. In Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, they are kind of dressed in darker colours as they're invading uh, Gondor, where it's a much cooler climate. I wanted to theme my army around the Siege of Umbar and Gondor's invasion of Harad, this was around the time when Sauron emerged in Dol Guldur. I kind of doubted that people would be wearing like blacks and purples in the hot desert sun, so I wanted to kind of make them lighter, creamier colours. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, I've never seen it so hot. It, it must be at least 14 and a half, maybe even 15 degrees. Like. So I had a look at some medieval armies in our world that fought in the heat, and I noticed that both sides wore a lot of whites and creams to reflect the sun's intense rays, so I settled on this being my main theme. I could of course be completely wrong, so uh, do feel free to correct me in the comments if I made a complete arse of this. However, I didn't want it to be completely bland and boring, so I used a secondary colour red, which is quite striking in comparison to the white, and it has a bonus of also kind of matching a lot of the Harad artwork, etc. Anyway, I've babbled on long enough, so let's move on to the actual showcase. First up, we've got the Spearman here, and um, for any duplicate poses, I've tried to kind of paint alternate colours. So cream where red is, and red where cream is, just to kind of keep them a bit more interesting. You also notice a couple of uh, fixed spearheads, as a lot of these I've owned for 15 years, so I had to repair them as the spears were all broken and lost many moons ago. Uh, now onto the archers, exactly the same story. Painted alternate colours where applicable, also you'll notice a couple of the bows have been uh, replaced with, I don't know, I think they're Empire Militiamen bows, I'm not 100%. Now for the foot command, I've got two banners, one of the old metal, one of the new resin. I've got uh, two Taskmasters, one's the resin one and one's a broken Harad guy that I stuck a phalagent whip thing on. It's pretty crap but does the job. Um, a musician. And I've got two of the the captains. One of them, I, I didn't want him to be the exact same pose, so I cut the bow off one and put it on his back and gave him holding some mad skull thing, just to keep things a little bit more interesting. Now the Cav Horsemen, I, I got three packs of raiders. Um, these are just the guys with the war spears, uh, give them a bit of hitting power for the army. I did want more spears than bows, so a couple of these were archers where I, and I've just replaced the, the bows with spears. Now we have six bowmen on horse, just to round out the numbers. So I've got two bannermen on horse, I've got one on foot, so if one of them gets dismounted I've got a model for the dismount. I've got a captain here and his dismount just with a sword. And I've got a king guy, I gave this big long scythe thing. I'm thinking of getting rid of that and just replacing it with a spear because it looks pretty stupid. As it's not scaled well from, I think it's the phalagent set again, from uh, the Empire. I converted up this guy from an old metal sullivan, I was going to have him as a Harad king. But once I, I finished him and before I put his banners on, I thought he would make a really good converted up Easterling war priest foot and mounted, so I'm going to keep him for my Easterling army in the future. Now two assassins, a lot of people have asked if these are based on Assassin's Creed, and honestly when I first painted them up I was not going for that, I was just going for keeping them in creamy colours so maybe the enemy wouldn't see them and they'd be a bit more stealthy on the table, so I could pull off some tricks within the game. I was going to add some red to these but 
I kind of really, I really like the the look of just the creams and the whites, so I've left it as is. Now onto the big man himself. I've got the Serpent King here, foot and mounted. I know he wasn't around 2,000 years ago at the Siege of Umbar, but I really wanted this guy to lead my army because um, it's just such a stunning model. And I really want to do the Serpent King's charge against the Rohirrim that's in the Battle of Pelennor Fields within the book. The Gondor of War book actually has a scenario for this event, so I'll definitely be playing that out at some point. So I've received a couple of spearmen from a friend for a very reasonable price. So I'll show you how I paint these up as it's very simple and it gives a good effect. I've got a, a spray stick that I've built from a jam jar and a bit of wood that I've super glued to the top of it. I then attach the minis with a double sided sticky tape. The base coat for these will be Wraithbone as we'll mainly be using contrast paints to paint these. So if you just grab that and ignore last night's kebab that's sitting there. A tip to get some good results when using spray paint is to put some hot water in a bowl, then leave the spray paint in the bowl for a couple of minutes just to kind of get, get warmed up. You want to do short quick bursts with the spray paint. This will should give you much better coverage than doing long blasts. I was actually quite nicely surprised by how well the bone colour sprayed over the, re the miniature that was already base coated black. Normally I would strip the paint before doing this, but in this instance I can't be bothered doing it just for one model. Okay, now we've got our model base coated. We give it a quick spin just to make sure we've not missed anywhere. And then we do the base. I do this quite easily by just putting some Wildwood contrast paint on the base. And then take the Wildwood and apply it to the kind of cloth at the end of the spears. Uh, I also do it on the armour. Technically you probably could skip doing this for the armour and just paint the gold straight on, but uh, I think it gives a nicer depth to the gold if you use this contrast paint first. So the next step is the red. So we can see here I've got two models with the exact same pose. To give a bit more variance in the army I'm going to make sure I don't paint the same areas red as I did on the other figure. Remember, if you make any mistakes, you can always fix them by using some of the Wraithbone paint. I make a lot of mistakes when using contrast paints, so I always have this handy to fix any errors I make. I want to do the base coat for the bone areas. Um, for this, I'll use Skeleton Horde. Just give all the areas that are going to be bone a good coating of this, and this will flow into the, the recesses and give some great shading later on. Next up is silver, just the only thing on these models really for silver is the weaponry. Don't put it away though as we will need it later on for some nice effects. I then use Gilliman Flesh Tone for the skin. If you want this to be a bit deeper and more matte, I would give it a coat of Agrax Earth Shade. However, uh, watching this back I realised I forgot to do this, so yeah, mistakes were made. Then use snake bite leather on the, the weapon pole and the cloth around the boots. I then use the old faithful retributiver retributiver armor. Well, the one that's just popped up on the screen. We then use some liquid skill in the form of Null Noil on the end of the weapon. Uh, I will also use some Agarax Earthshade on the gold. It was at this point I realised when I originally did this army that I must have done the gold first so that I could dry brush without having to worry about making mistakes. But it wasn't that hard to just be a bit more careful with my Liberator armor dry brush. You can see the miniature has had all its base coats um, and it doesn't, it doesn't look that fantastic if I'm being honest, 
but the next few colours will really help bring out the, the red and the cream to make them look a lot more natural. We then use the Evil Sun Scarlet layer paint on the cloth. Make sure we give it a good, uh, good coat, but leave the contrast paint in the recesses and this will create nice shading between the two layers. We then give it an edge highlight of Wild Rider Red to make the detail pop. Then use Screaming Skull in the same manner on the bone parts of the cloth. Which we then give a final highlight of White Scar. Now, in this state the miniature could be considered finished, however we need some contrast. The white and the red is great together, but I want something that will give the miniature a bit more. Wow! So the Haradrim have some nice gemstones slash jewels on the armour. I thought it would be fun to try out these new technical gemstone paints that I've picked up. There's only three colours to choose from and I decided to go with the Soulstone Blue. I already have a high elf army with green stones, so I thought it'd be nice to do something a bit different. You could also use the colour wheel to get a gem colour. We can see when we pick red it shows us turquoise being a nice contrasting colour to it. I believe this is what Games Workshop have done on their miniatures. You'd have to paint this the old manual way like my high elves, as there's currently no turquoise technical paint. I never thought about it, but I could have probably mixed the green and the blue to get a nice turquoise. But you know, it's a bit late now that I've painted the entire army. So to apply this, first we need to put a base coat of Stormhost Silver down. We then apply a good amount of the blue technical paint to create a nice gemstone effect. Uh, I would watch the Games Workshop tutorials on these to get a great idea of how to use them properly, as I definitely made a couple of mistakes when using this the first time. So I'll give the base a quick Moonfang Brown rim and apply some tufts. And that's your wee Harad man done and ready to add into the army. You could use this tutorial and use any other colour um, instead of the red. For instance here is a Dalmir I did for my Umbar army. I used a Pteridon turquoise instead as the base layer. You can paint an army up pretty fast using this technique and I think it looks pretty decent on the tabletop. I believe you could replace the red with any other colour and it would look good, so I'd love to see what you guys get up to. So, in Secret Santa I was lucky enough to get some half trolls from Far Harad. Uh, only realised later on that you can't get these for just Harad, you need to it's Far Harad only, so God, you know, I'm going to have to go and build a full warband. Uh, I'm not paying extortion at eBay prices for the outer production miniatures. So I'm going to go with these guys. Ghost, Acapello, Go, 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 Tribals. And these look the part. They get all the different weapons options you can give them. Um, I'll make one or one into like a, a king or a tribal leader or whatever they are. That means I can have a full warband allied into my Harad army. Uh, I was also stupid enough to go on Facebook Marketplace and found some Harad stuff that was going cheap. So I've got another four half trolls coming, another assassin, and some Haradrim raiders that I'm going to somehow convert into Serpent Guard. So that's my uh, future projects lined up for this army. Uh, it might be a while before I get back to it because I've got a couple other projects on the go at the moment. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and. Remember to give my bell a good old ring.